Nemelin rod myopathy is congenital myopathy with rods. Congenital myopathies are a collection of muscle disorders present early in life with a stable course that cause floppy muscle tone and weakness in the affected person. Nemelin myopathy is considered among the most common of all the congenital myopathies. In this video, we will talk briefly about what Nemelin myopathy is, how it's similar to the other congenital myopathies, what can cause it, how to manage it, and how to connect with others living with congenital myopathies. There are different ways to live with Nemelin myopathy, and each person may have unique qualities. So consider this video an overview of possibilities. Congenital means existing at birth or early onset of symptoms. Myopathy means muscle disease, and congenital Nemelin myopathy is basically that, an early onset disease affecting muscles. The symptoms are caused by the muscle weakness and can include shallow breathing caused by weak breathing muscles, along with limits to physical function caused by weak skeletal muscles, swallowing dysfunction with impaired speech ability caused by weak bulbar muscles in the mouth and throat is common as well. The weakness experienced is often worse at the core of the body and where limbs attach to the core, with somewhat less weakness at the ends of the limbs, feet, and hands. Often they can have very weak neck muscles and may not be able to lift their heads. Many will also have bone malformations since the muscle problem affects the structure growth and strength of bone too. The muscle weakness can be so severe that the person may not be able to move any part of his or her body or so mild that you would never guess they have anything different about how their muscles function. The muscle weakness can cause problems with many of the body systems, but brain and eye function are usually not affected at all. Nemelin myopathy, abbreviated NM, is thought to occur as frequently as once for every 50,000 live births around the world based on a study done in Finland. It was originally described and named Nemelin myopathy by a clinical research group in 1963 after observing symptoms in a patient and taking a muscle sample to view up close what it looked like. The scientists found that some of the muscle cells had tiny rod-like filaments clustered inside them, which was not normal. They used that finding to name the muscle condition Nemelin myopathy, since Nema is Greek for thread-like or rod-like, Nema Lin, Nemelin. Many congenital myopathies were originally classified in the same way based on how the muscle looked with magnification. Other findings in the muscle cells that are diagnostic of Nemlin myopathy include smaller sized muscle cells and a predominance of type 1 muscle fibers, the slow twitch type. Type 2 fibers, the ones for jumping and running, are usually lacking and seem to reduce in number over time, hinting that type 2 fibers may be converting to type 1 fibers due to disuse a theory supported by some scientific studies. Some people might mistakenly believe that the nemelin rods seen in the muscle cells cause the muscle weakness, but that is not true. The nemelin rods are not a cause, they are an effect of the disease process. In fact, plenty of cases have turned up of the nemelin rods being seen in the muscle cells of patients with other disorders such as mitochondrial myopathies, myotonic dystrophy type 1, and Hodgkin's disease, as well as other acquired diseases that are unrelated to myopathy. Congenital myopathy can result in both rods and cores in the muscle fibers, and when this happens, it's called core rod myopathy. There is even a muscle disorder acquired in adulthood, often confused with congenital NM, because it was discovered as a result of finding nemelin rods in the muscle cells and was named sporadic late onset nemelin myopathy, abbreviated SLONM. Actually, SLONM is a completely different muscle disease with different causes, course, prognosis, and treatment options and should not be confused as a congenital myopathy. The boundaries between different types of congenital myopathy are blurred and overlapping. Nemlin myopathy is like other congenital myopathies, 
in that there are difficulties with basic physical activities, like breathing, moving around, eating, and perhaps speaking. They usually have very low or absent deep tendon reflexes and easily fatigue. NM may be unique from some other congenital myopathies in the degree to which facial muscles can be impaired and how that affects a person's appearance and ability to enunciate. It is now thought that NM is not just one muscle condition, as the name seems to imply, but is better understood as a collection of inherited congenital myopathies with rods, displaying a spectrum of severity as wide as you can imagine. Some people may confuse congenital myopathy with muscular dystrophy, but they are not the same. Muscular dystrophy often involves a rapid loss of muscle and function as a result of muscle cell damage, which is not something those with congenital myopathy experience. That deterioration and the addition of new symptoms occurs after living some period of life with functional muscles Therefore, the worsening of muscular dystrophy may mean an unfavorable change in how one lives life. Congenital myopathy, on the other hand, is non-dystrophic, meaning there is not an ongoing loss of function and rarely new symptoms that arise because of the disease process. The rapid decline that takes place in muscular dystrophy is different from a steady decline that takes place through the natural course of aging with most anyone else. There are many genes associated with having mutations causal to NM, 13 at the time of this video. The most common gene implicated is called nebulin and causes about half of all cases of congenital myopathy with rods. It is a giant gene with instructions for the body on how the muscle should be built and should contract. And in people with nebulin related congenital myopathy, those important instructions are missing or dysfunctional because of the genetic mutation. The second most common gene implicated is called alpha-actin, and it is thought to cause about a quarter of all cases of congenital myopathy with rods. The flawed gene can be passed down from generation to generation, with only some family members having the muscle disorder, while others may be silent carriers. Or the gene mutation can happen spontaneously in a developing embryo. Males and females are each just as likely to be past congenital myopathy with rods. There is a wide spectrum of the ways people with NM can be affected, regardless of the gene variant they have. Congenital myopathies are genetic muscle diseases, not to be confused with acquired conditions or contagious diseases that spread. Managing life with NM or any type of congenital myopathy requires adaptation and coping, such as gaining a lot of medical knowledge, buying or renting specialized equipment at great expense, finding a wheelchair accessible home, and changing how you thought life would be. Many people with NM will need special care, including breathing machines to help them get enough oxygen in and carbon dioxide out of their lungs, feeding tubes to get enough nutrition, cough machines to bring up secretions caught in the lungs, and suction machines to clear their airways. For those with severe forms, the chances of survival are limited and they will need hospital level care, which can sometimes be delivered at home in what are basically mini ICUs staffed by knowledgeable parents, sometimes caregivers and often nurses 24 hours a day. To help people gain that medical knowledge, there is a guidebook called the Care of Congenital Myopathy, a Guide for Families. You can find it on many websites that support congenital myopathy. Look for it at mcw.edu slash cmdtr or just Google the title. It's also available at amazon.com as an ebook. Check the description below for links. To find others living the life of congenital myopathy, whether they are affected directly or caring for someone who has any form of congenital myopathy, you can find the group on Facebook called Congenital Myopathy Community. We're all in this together. You can find the link to this group in the description section below. There are conferences and social gatherings where you would have a chance to meet others living a life similar to yours. Events, updates, and support can be found in the online community 
or check out the public page on Facebook called Nemelin Myopathy. You can find the link to this page in the description section below. There is no effective treatment or cure available yet, so management of the symptoms is basic supportive care. Researchers are hoping to find ways to restore the protein or even replace the missing or dysfunctional gene, thereby provide the body with the protein that gene is supposed to make. There is one form of congenital myopathy that has a promising genetic treatment being tested in patients now that aims to deliver a correct copy of the defective gene to the person's body so it can provide the right instructions to reverse the muscle disease symptoms. It's possible that a similar therapy may be useful for treating other congenital myopathies. To stay informed on the study and testing of treatment strategies for congenital myopathy, you can follow the page called Congenital Muscle Disease Research Resource on Facebook. You can find the link to this page in the description section below. Nemelin myopathy is congenital myopathy with rods. NM, like all congenital myopathies, is a genetic condition present early in life that affects the muscles of the body at differing degrees of severity, depending upon an individual's particular case. Under optimal conditions, one may be able to live a very satisfying life, no matter how a person is affected by the disorder. We hope you found this video to be informative, and we thank you for watching.